Welcome to this tutorial, which explains how to monitor esophageal and transpulmonary pressure with the Pomo Vista and the new Draeger pressure pot. Within the next minutes, I will demonstrate you how to prepare the measurements and how to control the correct position of the balloon catheter. The monitoring of esophageal and transpulmonary pressures is increasingly gaining interests amongst intensivists. The major motivation for using this information is that knowing the esophageal pressure allows discriminating between the lung and chest wall elastins and calculating the transpulmonary pressure. Because this is a pressure which actually distends the lung and thus needs to be limited. Moreover, the esophageal pressure allows to estimate the respiratory drive of spontaneously breathing patients. So, how is this information obtained by Pomo Vista? For calculating transpulmonary pressure, the airway pressure and esophageal pressure need to be known. With a Draeger pressure pot, a plug and play device, these pressures can conveniently be measured. Firstly, simply connect it to a Pomo Vista via USB. To avoid technical misreading, already start the pressure measurements on Pomo Vista 500 while the pressure ports are still open. Select the view PTP analysis to make sure the airway and esophageal pressure waveforms show values close to zero. To measure airway pressure, just connect the pressure measuring line to a disposable syringe filter at the port for the airway pressure. Connect the other end of the measuring line to a lure lock at the breathing circuit, which can be located at the Y piece, a filter or a heat and moisture exchanger. That's quite simple. And now you can already observe the airway pressure waveform on the screen. Now we prepare the measurement of the esophageal pressure. In this tutorial, we use the Fluxmit Respiratory Mechanics Kit, which contains the probe with a guide wire already in place, a syringe, and an extension line that is already connected to a three-way stopcock. Depending on the pressure probe being used, lubrification of the guide wire is required prior to its insertion. We connect the extension line to the esophageal port at the pressure pot. To improve the sliding of the probe, consider applying a lubricant at the tip of the probe, if appropriate. Then, with the patient in semi-recumbent position and the head in straight position or slightly lifted forward, we slowly insert the catheter through the nostril and then through the hypopharynx with just a smooth advance. We advance the probe further to the stomach. Then we remove the guide wire carefully. Now we connect the three-way stopcock at the extension line to the Lure Lock connector of the esophageal balloon catheter. Then we connect the syringe to the three-way stopcock as well. In our case, with the Fluxmit probe, we first inflate the balloon with an air volume of 5 ml and then deflate 3.5 ml, resulting in a total inflation volume of 1.5 ml. We can immediately observe the pressure waveform on the screen. Now we slowly withdraw the catheter until the cardiac oscillation become present in the esophageal pressure waveform. Now it's time to check the proper balloon position. We conduct an end expiratory occlusion maneuver and open the dialogue occlusion test. For patients with spontaneous inspiratory efforts, wait for those efforts. Use the sliders to mark the occlusion phase which should include negative swings caused by those inspiratory efforts. For sedated patients, apply external manual chest compressions. Use the sliders to mark the occlusion phase, which should now include positive swings caused by the compression. Use a diagram to compare the shape of the esophageal and airway pressure waveform and to assess the ratio of esophageal and airway driving pressures. When this ratio lies within the range of 0.8 to 1.2 and R square represents a greater value than 0.95, the balloon is considered to be located at the right position and thus 
the esophageal measurements to be reliable. If the occlusion test should not result in an acceptable match of the two waveforms, withdraw the catheter in steps between 3 and 5 cm and repeat the occlusion test again after each repositioning until an acceptable match is reached. After the occlusion test has been successfully passed, we finally secure the probe by fixing it to the patient's nose with medical tape. Now you can assess the information about regional ventilation distribution together with the pressure waveforms and derived parameters simultaneously in one view, complemented by several analyzing options. This information will bring you one important step closer to the full clinical picture of your patient.